Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and let's talk about TrueNAS Core 13 Beta 1. And I'm going to tell you that it works pretty good. There are some bugs, which we're going to talk about later. We're going to talk about some of the new features and changes. But for those of you wondering, it's not dramatically different in terms of the way it looks, but there is a lot of things going on under the hood in terms of performance optimization. This is also going to helpfully solidify the fact that, yes, they are going to continue, they as in IX Systems, building on TrueNAS Core. TrueNAS Scale has been released. They're developing on that, and now they're developing on TrueNAS Core. These two product lines can coexist, and one company can have what appears to be somewhat competing product lines, but they're a little different from each other, and they're different enough, especially because they're based on different operating systems, that there is a need for both of them in the market. Now, as of right now, I'm going to still say TrueNAS Core is the more performance-oriented system. I've talked about that when I've done the comparison videos, and I'll leave links to things I've talked about down below. I will be doing some future videos on, well, more more testing between TrueNAS Core 13, TrueNAS Core 12, and of course TrueNAS Scale and see where we're at in performance. But in terms of performance, the performance seems pretty good so far with TrueNAS 13. I have no problems editing this video in my video editing setup that uses this as my storage device. So uh, yeah, I think it's worth talking about and it's worth switching to, provided you always have a backup, which you should have a backup even before you're testing beta things, and that you're willing to take the time to test beta things and deal with some of the issues so we can help out the community and help out the developers and show them our edge cases where we may find problems so we can get these things developed and get the full release out and have it be a, well, hopefully bug-free experience. Before we dive into the details of this video, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, such as storage consulting, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get your deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Now, the first part I want to start with is how do you get to TrueNAS Core 13 Beta 1? You can't just go here and say check for updates and switch to the beta, it's a little bit different of basically just install the manual update file. Before in the previous ones, you could switch the release train versus the beta train. Um, that's been removed. So you would just download the file, choose the file, upload it, make sure you choose where you'd like to store that file, like on your storage device here, upload it, do the upgrade, and the upgrade is pretty painless. It's pretty simple. Now, of course, you won't want to upgrade without the ability to roll back. So let's talk about that really quick. The 13 beta, which is what I'm on now, is option for reboot. But if I needed to go back, I could just simply go here and activate my previous boot environment and would go back over that. But one more caveat here that you have to make sure you do not do if you are considering going back. If you go to storage, then pools, it will offer to upgrade the pool. The problem with upgrading the pool to the newer version of ZFS is it's newer than the version that's in 12.0 U8, because that's one of the things that 13 has done is update the ZFS version. Therefore, if you were to do that and go back, your pool would not be accessible in 12.0. So just avoid anything that says, hey, you should upgrade to the latest ZFS version. I just don't recommend uh, doing that just yet, unless you're confident enough and not worried about any of the data loss that may occur or problems and not being able to go back. But now on to the topics of this system and what I use it for. This is my TrueNAS Mini 3.0X Plus with an Intel Atom C3758 at 2.2 gigahertz. This system very specifically, if we go over here and look at the sharing on it, you'll see that yes, I am using iSCSI. This is what connects my gaming system for my Steam library is stored on here. Uh, so that has worked perfectly fine. And then we have Windows Share for SMB. I have a couple different shares for backing up my computer video production and computer sync, which is basically how the studio computer talks to this in order to get all the data over. And then all my editing is actually stored here. So I copy it from one folder to the other or one share to the other and do all my editing. I don't have any jails. I don't have any plugins. I don't have any virtual machines and there's nothing using NFS. So the scope of my testing so far has limited to just this. But there's a lot of people who have done a lot of testing. And I wanted to jump over to that because the experience is have been really positive with 13. Because they're not making major sweeping changes in terms of redoing it, or it's not like scale where it's a completely rebased operating system, this is more all about performance tuning. And there's a 
overall, some really positive feedback people have had in here. And essentially what they're saying is it didn't get much faster in terms of overall performance speed, but what they did see was less CPU load for a given workload. So the workloads in 12, well, switching it over to 13, the system was less stressed to get the same amount of performance. And I think that was really good. And there's a plenty to read in here in the performance posts, but there is at least one thing, and I'm the bringer of bad news, so we'll jump right to my forum post. I don't know how to solve this problem yet, but it didn't stop me from staying on 13. Let me bring up what this is. With my TrueNAS Mini system, and it's you know describing my use case here, for some reason, my Chelsea IO cards, which are SFP+, Plus, wouldn't get over 1.7 gigs a second when I'm using iPerf. I don't know why. They were operating fine, getting full speed with TrueNAS 12, and even disabling the hardware offloading didn't seem to fix it. I'm lucky enough that this system also has RJ45 10 gig connectors. So I plug that in and that has no problem getting 8.2 gigs a second completely steady with iPerf 3. So the Intel cards is the ones I'm using now. I just don't use the Chelsea AO for the moment. I'm sure that'll be fixed with some of the updates as it comes out of beta, but I at least posted a forum post, you know, make people aware and I'll probably eventually look and see if there's a ticket I can find on this later. Back to what's really new in here. Well, as I said, from an interface standpoint, nothing really changed here. It really looks the same. I didn't notice any major UI changes, even things like replication, which they are working on, which I'll talk about momentarily. The task itself, when you go here, spell out the task, go over here to replication tasks, add mostly interface things. I didn't see anything particularly different about it. So this system, different system, SSH connections, and there is some exceptions if you have problems with this. The key type, that I'll, I'll note that in a moment here. Uh, make sure when you're setting these up, you have proper key types for SSH enabled uh, in order to get it to work with older systems because system right here is running TrueNAS 12. But nonetheless, there's some tuning they're going to be doing to this, but I don't think it's all done in a UI yet. Now, let's jump over here to the list in here. And this is where there's a lot of things going on here. And the thing I want to start right away on is going to be the OpenZFS rebase to ZFS 2.1 release. Now, if you just look up what's new in OpenZFS 2.1, you'll see there's a lot of things coming. Now, all these features may not be enabled right now or immediately in TrueNAS, but this is what paves the way for those future releases and future features that are coming in ZFS 2.1. One of them that a few people have asked me about, and I know this is something I'm going to dive into. I did watch this video and it didn't 100% clear it up for me. And it's essentially D-RAID. I'm still wrapping my head around it to make sure I really am clear on how well I understand it. But D-RAID is going to be a solution for people with very large data sets, as in large sets of drives, I should say. If you have a lot of data drives, there are some challenges when you set these up. And I've talked about this when you're laying out in all the different VDEVs. And there's certain overheads that you end up incurring by spreading them out, by separating them all, because you can't just make them a super wide VDEV. Nonetheless, there's a lot of nuance to this. And there is a video as well uh, that dives in, talk about it. It's not by me, it's by, well, it's at the OpenZFS uh, people themselves put this video out there. And it's a talk. And it's really something, uh, this is an older talk. Yes, it is from 2017, but there's a lot of development that's been going on. So this is them putting together the D-Rate idea, and it's something that's going to be part of the OpenCFS 2.1. But that does not mean it automatically just comes to TrueNAS, but this paves the way for that for those of you wondering. I just wanted to get a little off topic to mention this, um, that there's still a lot of development going on, and this still you know, feeds back into both scale and TrueNAS Core because they're both rebasing off the newer version of OpenZFS. This is just some fun reading if you're like me and a storage nerd and want to keep diving further into it. Now, the other things we see in here are lots of, you know, optimized free BSD CPU scheduler. And right here, it says a number of CPU scheduler improvements. These are the tuning that's really going on here. So that's a big part of what's going on. It's just so much tuning. And this is what's got me excited because, well, I, I'm really happy with the feature set that's in there. Why not just, you know, tune it up a little bit and get more out of my hardware. Now the replication configuration, this is where I don't see it in the UI elements yet, but it's the new configuration service replication config. And it's the ability to add the maximum number of replication tasks being executed simultaneously. This sounded kind of interesting because I wanted to see 
if it was exposed. I didn't see anything, like I said, in the replication UI on this, but uh, more tuning along this because we have more and more clients that are replicating many different TrueNAS systems to each other. So the more they're focusing on enhancing this, the better so we can you know, really uh, fine tune those different settings in here. Because the one thing I'll say about replication, it's one of my favorite ways because this is done at a block level in ZFS. I've got videos and tutorials on this. It's really a great methodology by which you can replicate data from one system to another. It's it's like backing it up. I know some people think, well, does it just clone the system to make like a duplicate of it? It duplicates data sets at a block level. This is a really great way to get data from where it is to where you want it to be along with all the snapshots. And it does so much faster than using something like rsync or just a file copy because this is all looking at the block level changes. And it's also doing it and able to pull the snapshots. So as you use the enhanced features of ZFS, those enhanced features and the different parameters are replicated perfectly over on the other system that it's destined to. Those particular data sets that you set up to replicate. So any enhancements in this is definitely something I'm going to look forward to. Now I'll leave links to everything I talked about. And my goal always is to get more people using these type of tools. And of course, more people beta testing it. It's kind of quiet over in that FreeNAS beta 13 experience link in that forum post there. Why not have a few more of us doing some tests, diving into it? And uh, I plan to probably switch one or two more machines over to it. Try it, see if I need to, you know, go back and wait till like beta two comes out. But for now, the beta one seems really good. Uh, well, like I said, I uploaded this video on there. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. If you find a bug complaining about it on YouTube or Twitter is really not the place. Uh, they do have forums where it is great to have a more in-depth discussion about the different bugs you may find because that's where the developers are watching it. Also, my forums are a great place to have a discussion, but my forums are not the place to report bugs or complain about things that you would like a developer to fix because I don't know that the developers spend a lot of time in my forums looking at those complaints. I always wanted to put a little clarification on there. Uh, you'll see when people post in my forums and they frequently, someone will start with a problem they're having with a product. And if it's not a problem related to my videos, I may direct you over to the forums. If it's like, hey, I was finding a bug in this, um, I'll look at it. If I know an answer, I'm more than happy to answer it. But sometimes if you're filling it out like a bug report, take that, copy, paste it, and put it over in their forums. Just want to get that out there. This is one of those things I encourage greatly when editors beta software because this is how we work together as a community to make all this software better and yes you you watching this video you can participate in the improvement of these open source projects it's just one of the cool features of open source and i'll leave you guys with that thank you and take care and thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video if you've enjoyed the content please give us a thumbs up if you would like to see more content from this channel hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.